Hey people, C Squared here. Earlier today, I was watching some of the new videos people are posting about the upcoming Panasonic uh, full frame camera, the S1. And I came across a new video from, I think his name is Casey from Camera Conspiracies. And he had, you know, gone along talking about the S1. And then lo and behold, in the middle of the video, there was a clip of one of my videos about the GH5. And he was pointing out how, while it may look pretty good in general, you can see pulsing and uh, uh, the camera hunting for focus on the background. And he was pointing out my bookcase back here. So I wanted to address that a little bit, not to defend the GH5, but he actually pointed out something that is a concern about this stuff. So the uh, type of contrast detection autofocus that these Panasonic uh, cameras have, it, it has this tendency to uh, maybe always second guess itself a little bit. And I don't really think that it's doing any, uh, putting any attention on the background itself. I think it's just a byproduct of the camera trying to focus because when you put it in one area mode, it still does it and it shouldn't really be looking at anything back behind you. It should be looking at what's inside the little focus box and it still does it. So what I think is happening is it's constantly trying to adjust itself to find uh, better focus or to see if you've moved and you know where the subject has moved and if it needs to move somewhere and it just becomes uh, this sort of nervous situation on the camera's behalf so uh, so what what I thought might be interesting is to maybe reduce the camera sensitivity a little bit now he also pointed out in his uh, assessment of that clip that I was using an f2.8 uh, which doesn't have all that shallow of a depth of field. So I went to this lens, which is an F1.4. He mentioned what would it do if it was an F1. Well, I don't have an F1, but uh, I do have a lens that goes to F1.4, and that's what I'm shooting at right now, the uh, Panasonic Leica 25mm F1.4. So I have it set for manual focus right now, so this is sort of our baseline of, you know, supposed perfection where there's no hunting or pulsing or anything like that. It should be totally locked on to my face and the amount of out of focus on the background should stay constant. Now, for our tests and so forth, I wanted to make it a little more obvious even, so I added some little uh, LED lights. They're real small, so uh, unfortunately I don't have anything bigger than that to put back there, but uh, real small lights that we can see and and we can really uh, have it highlighted or exaggerated how much it's moving the focus when it tries to track the subject or adjust that focus on the subject. So um, we don't want to confuse that with uh, that movement in the lights uh, for the flicker. There's a little bit of flicker on the frequency, I guess, of some of these little lights that we can see even, even in the uh, manual focus right now. But when it's hunting, you'll actually see the size of those little bokeh balls, we could call them, moving uh, larger and smaller, and it makes it more obvious. So I just wanted to add that back there for a worst case scenario. When you have a static scene like this, you'll notice how much it's moving, and it's not going to be as perfect as when someone is uh, f pulling focus with a manual lens and they can smoothly move that focus and anticipate just exactly where they're going to go like you would see in a well-done movie. Uh, autofocus is constantly trying to do a real-time adjustment and really just keep auto correcting itself the whole time so it's never going to be quite as perfect i guess uh but it will i'm sure they'll get it to a point where we won't even know the difference and it'll be great at some some and some day in the future but right now it just is what it is so what i wanted to do is reduce the sensitivity of the autofocus and see if that would help so i've taken the uh, sensitivity of the autofocus down to negative one and the speed down to negative three to just see if i could dull the camera's senses just a little bit so it wouldn't constantly be be moving quite as much. Now, there'll still be some, but it won't be as much, hopefully. So I'm going to compare the two most popular forms of autofocus for this camera, which is the one area and the face detection. So let's get started and just uh, compare this static scene with uh, the manual focus to the autofocus attempting to follow me around in the scene, moving forward, backward, and turning, and so forth, uh, with all of the rest of it the same. Okay, for this first test, I've got it set for face detection, and we'll watch the uh, background here to see how much it pulses or moves uh, while I'm sitting really still. So I'm going to try to sit pretty still here, even though 
Uh, I'm talking, but I'll try not to move much. So it shouldn't really be hunting a whole lot. Uh, might be a little bit, but hopefully not much. And we would also don't want to confuse the hunting for any flicker, any light flicker uh, that might be happening because of the uh, little LED bulbs. I noticed there's a little bit of flicker in those when I was looking back at some earlier footage that wasn't pulsing. It was just a light uh, frequency thing. So anyway, um, now I'm going to move back some, let it refocus here, sit still for a second. Now I'm going to try moving around a little bit. Uh, the face tracking sometimes gets a little weird when you move to a profile, but again, I'm trying to reduce its sensitivity and speed a little bit so that if I do move to the side, it wouldn't lose me. But the other thing is, again, we're looking at how smoothly can it shift the focus so that the background doesn't look too weird and distracting. So a combination of things, I guess. We're looking for focus on me. We're also looking at how smooth can we get the transition in the background. Now I'm also going to spin all the way around here, uh, see what it does with my back to the camera. I'm moving back around and forward to about where I was earlier. Okay, so let's check that one out and compare it to uh, the one area. Okay, now I've got it set for one area, and everything else is the same. Uh, that sensitivity was turned down negative one, and the speed negative three. So uh, I'm going to sit kind of still right here. Again, we want to look and see how the uh, bookshelf is looking. Is it uh, adjusting too much while I sit pretty still? Um, and again, try not to confuse flicker of those little lights with any pulsing. So really what we're looking for is a change in size. So I will now move back a little bit, move to the side. I'm going to try to stay in the box. Uh, this isn't really uh, very conducive to this type of movement when you have a one area uh, focus setting, um, but I'm trying to stay in it. Uh, so anyway, all the way to the back, and I'm probably in it. Okay, coming back, and I'll move forward and back. So hopefully that is uh, a pretty acceptable amount of that. We really want to make it where it's not distracting from what's going on. Uh, it's kind of hard to hope for perfection here. Uh, I know that some people would like for it to be perfect, uh, but it is still just a machine. It's not going to be a person who's pulling focus manually and making it uh, just this really smooth thing going from one place to another and anticipating where the subject is going to go. Um, so there's a lot of computing going on. Uh, it's sort of a workaround, a compromise at best. And again, when I shoot in a situation like this, I would much rather just use uh, manual focus anyway. Uh, but for vlogging and for things where you just want to set up real quick and film yourself, it's very important to be able to do autofocus and I want to see how this performance is since uh, Camera Conspiracies mentioned it. I wanted to pursue it and just see uh, what sort of performance we could get out of it. So I hope you enjoyed checking this out. I don't really have a real comment right now for how well this just did. For one, I can't see it, uh, but I did look at some real similar tests that I did earlier and I have some feelings about it, uh, but rather than just completely skew this. I would like to hear what you think of it. So if you have some ideas, some opinions, leave them in the uh, comments below. And if you think there's some ways to adjust this even better than the way I was doing it, I'd like to hear that too. It's always good to get some information. And uh, as always, I appreciate you watching. Thanks for watching this video. Click like and subscribe and I hope to see you soon.